guys, this video is going to go over circles and circumference. Please make sure you have a calculator for during this video and your note sheet. All right, so, all right, so today we're gonna to be talking about circles, okay? So first thing, definition of a circle. Circle is a set of all points that are the same distance from a point called the center. So here's the center of a circle, and here's a bunch of points around the outside. They're all the same distance away from that middle. That's the definition of a circle. So we are going to draw a circle and label some special parts of the circle. Okay, so first thing, the middle, the very middle point in a circle is called the center. Okay, so you can go ahead and put that on there. Now, if I go from the center of the circle to the outside, okay, that has a special name that's called a radius. All right, so again, if I just drew you another little circle, there's a lot of um, radii, that's the plural. There's a lot of radii in a circle. Here's a radius, here's a radius, here's a radius. Just has to go from the middle to the outside. All right, another part of a circle that you're gonna to need to know is something called a diameter. So a diameter goes from the outside of a circle, goes through the middle, all the way to the other side. Okay, that's called a diameter, if you wanna label that on your picture. Okay, there's also more than one diameter in a circle. Okay, so if I drew a little circle over here, it just has to go through the middle. Here's a diameter, here's a diameter, here's a diameter, there's lots of them. Goes from the outside, through the middle, across to the other outside parts. Okay, and then the last word that you need to know is basically it's the definition for perimeter of a circle, the outside of a circle. So if I measured all the way around this outside of a circle, that's called the circumference. And we're going to talk about that more in this video. So, but for now, you can just kind of label that. That's going all the way around the outside of a circle. So these are the parts of a circle that you're going to need to know. All right, we're gonna get the definition of diameter and radius down. So first thing, diameter, the definition again is it's a straight line, has to be a straight line. It goes through the center of the circle and it goes from one point on the outside to another point. So again, there's a diameter. That's all the way across. Radius, again, has to be a straight line. It goes from the outside of the circle to the middle of the circle. Okay, now we're gonna talk about how diameter and um, radius relate to each other. So let's kind of think about this. If I know the diameter of this circle up here, if I knew that that was, let's say 10, all the way across is 10. The radius is actually, a radius of that is only halfway across. So that would be five. So the diameter is actually double whatever the radius is. Here's one way to write that. The diameter is double two times whatever the radius is. Now let's kind of work backwards here. What if I told you the diameter of this circle down here was 12? and I wanted you to figure out, well, how long is the radius? Well, the radius is actually whatever the diameter is divided by two, it's half of it. So if I had 12, I divided by that by two, that would give me six for the radius. So that's how diameter and radius kind of relate to each other. All right, so in the last activity that you did, you kind of learned what pi was. So I'm gonna kind of talk about that a little bit. So um, back when uh, mathematicians were first working with pi um, and with circles, they took a bunch of different shape circles, okay, all different shape circles, and they were measuring a couple different things. So first thing, they measured how far around the outside it was, and then they measured what was the diameter, like across the middle. So they did that in a bunch of circles. They did it in big circles, small circles, medium circles, okay, and this is what they found out. They figured out if you took whatever the circumference was, that's all the way around the outside, and then they divided it by whatever the diameter was, that's across the middle, every time they divided that out, they got the same number. And it was a really weird number. Actually, it never ends. It was 3.14159, keeps going, 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 and it kept going forever, it never ended. They always were getting that number. Okay, they decided to call that number pi. Here's the symbol that you use for pi, okay? It's a Greek symbol, um, but this is the symbol that they used for it. So again, pi, it never ends, okay? So when we call it, when we use 3.14 for pi, that's not exact. So a lot of times you're gonna see these, this little symbol that means approximately or about. So pi, we're always gonna use 3.14. It actually never ends, keeps going on forever, um, but when we're, we're typing it in on our calculator, we're gonna use this number. So that is pi. All right, so we talked about circumference already in the first slide, but um, circumference is how the distance around the outside of a circle. Another word for that is perimeter. All right, so when you wanna to try to find the circumference of a circle, there's a formula that you can use to find circumference. 
Um, and basically, they got it from the um, finding pi. So we know that pi is the same as circumference divided by diameter. Well, basically, they just rewrote that formula and solved it for circumference. So here is the formula for circumference that you need to know. Circumference equals, all you need to do is take whatever, you know what pi is, and you multiply it by the diameter. There's your formula. Okay, please put that in your notes. We're going to be using that a lot. So again, you're going to take pi, and we're always going to use 3.14, and then you times it by whatever the diameter is. That's how you get circumference. All right, let's go ahead and try an example. So I have a circle here, and I know the diameter. It's 20. It's going all the way across. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the circumference. So the first thing I'm always going to do is write down my formula. Circumference equals pi times diameter. You should always write your formula down first. Okay, then I'm going to fill in what I know. I don't know the circumference, so I'm just going to write a C. Equals, I do know what pi is. We're going to use 3.14 for pi, and then when it's right next to the D, we're going to put times... I know my diameter is 20. All right, so now I'm going to grab my calculator and type in 3.14 times 20. Why don't you go ahead and do that? All right, when I do that, I get 62.8. So my circumference is 62.8, and my label is just going to be centimeters because it's just a distance around the outside. So there is my circumference. All right, now, there, this is kind of something important too. This is not the exact circumference because this is not the exact number for pi. 3.14, pi actually goes on and on forever. It never ends. So we just kind of round it. So this is not an exact answer. So usually when you are working with circumference, you're going to put this little symbol. It means about or approximately 62.8. So that's my approximate circumference. It's not exact because pi, this is not exact for pi. Now, if I wanted the exact circumference, here's what I would do. Okay, I know circumference is pi times diameter. Okay. Since I don't know the exact number for pi, I'm just going to keep that symbol, and then I'm going to write times my diameter, which is 20. So if I was going to do the exact circumference, it would be 20 times pi, and then my label is centimeters. So this is a more exact way to write it. Again, because we don't know what pi is, we're just going to keep that symbol and times it by 20. This is an approximate. Most of the time, we're going to just find an approximate area. All right, let's try a couple examples. We're going to find um, the approximate circumference of these circles. So again, first thing you're always going to want to do is I want you to write the formula down. Circumference equals pi times diameter. First step. Okay, second step, you need to fill in what you know. I'm trying to find the circumference, so I'm going to keep that C there. Okay, I know what pi is. Instead of pi, we're going to use 3.14 as an estimate. And then I need to figure out, well, what's my diameter and times that by the diameter. So I'm going to come back up to my picture. Now I know diameter goes all the way across the circle. This is only halfway across. So I need to go all the way across. If I went all the way across, um, another 7, my whole diameter is 14. Okay? So I'm going to do 3.14 times 14. So grab your calculator and type that in. Okay, when I do that, I get my answer circumference. It's about 43.96, and my label is centimeters. There is my circumference. All right, I have another circle. This time it's a half circle or something called a semicircle, and we're going to find the circumference. Now, we got to do this one a little bit different. Okay, basically we need to figure out, well, how long is this part of a circle? So you guys need to kind of think about, well, this isn't a full circle. It's a half circle. So we, we can imagine that, you know, if we completed the circle, that would be a full circle. So let's see if we can find what it would be all the way around the outside. So first thing, I'm going to write down my circumference formula. C equals pi times diameter. Okay, I'm going to fill in what I know. Pi is 3.14, and I know my diameter is 6, going all the way across. All right, I'm going to type in 3.14 times 6. Okay, when you type that in, you get 18.84. Now, that number gives me all the way around the outside. I don't want all the way around the outside. I only need this part. Well, that's half a circle, so I'm going to just take half of that. I'm going to divide that by 2 because it's only half. So hit divide by 2 on your calculator. And that outside part is going to be 9.42. So this part up here in pink, or I'll just trace it in blue, that's 9.42. Okay, now I need to find the perimeter of this shape. It's kind of a weird shape. Now, you guys know perimeter means all the way around the outside. So I'm going to take this part, which is 9.42, plus I still got to take this bottom part because I got to go all the way around this shape. Okay, so to find my, my 
total perimeter or circumference of this shape, I'm going to do 9.42 plus 6, because that's my shape. So if I do 9.42 plus 6, I end up with 15.42 meters. Okay, there's my perimeter of this shape. All right, this problem says that the circumference of a pizza is 22.5 centimeters. First thing I would do when, when you have a word problem is kind of underline some important stuff. The circumference of the pizza, 22.5 centimeters. I want to know what is the diameter. All right, so the first thing I always do is when I'm working with circumference, I know it's a circumference problem, I'm going to write down the formula. Circumference equals pi times diameter. All right, next thing you should always do is fill in any information that you know. Well, I know the circumference of the pizza, that's all the way around the outside, is 22.5. So instead of a C in my formula, I'm going to fill in a 22.5. Equals, okay, I know pi, I'll fill that in. I don't know the diameter, so I'll keep that as a D. Okay, so now basically you're just going to solve this like you solve a normal equation. Okay, if you want to get D by itself, you're going to do the opposite of multiplying and you're going to divide by 3.14. Because 3.14 divided by 3.14 is 1, or just 1D. Okay, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, so I'm going to divide by 3.14. Okay, so if you go to your calculator and you type that in, 22.5 divided by 3.14, and when you type that in, you don't get a real nice number. So just round to uh, maybe one decimal spot. So on my calculator, I see 7.165. Okay, if I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, you can look at the next number, which is a 6. If it's 5 or higher, you round that up. So it's going to be 7.2. So my diameter is about 7.2 centimeters. All right, so here's our next problem. It says T-Swift was riding her bike one day. And she has a bike wheel, so I'll just drive, draw a bike wheel quick. It has a diameter, diameter is all the way across the middle, of 60 inches. I'll just kind of label that. We want to know how many turns would her bike wheel make if she traveled this many inches. So her bike wheel is going to spin, spin, spin. So every time, you know, your bike wheel keeps going around, keeps spinning, you're going to cover some distance, right? You're going to keep going. Okay, she went 1,318.8 inches. I want to know how many spins did that take. Okay, so think about a spin. That means all the way, or a turn, that's all the way around the outside. So first I have to figure out, well, if it just did one turn, how far would that be? So I need to find the circumference. All right, so circumference is pi times diameter. So first thing I'm going to do is write that down. All right, I don't know the circumference. I do know pi, and I do know the diameter, which is 60. Right, so to find the circumference of that bike wheel, I'm going to do 3.14 times 60. So grab your calculator. Okay, and I get 188.4. Okay, so that is just one turn of the bike wheel. It's going to travel 188.4 inches. Now, if that's one turn, I could figure out two turns. I would just do that times two. I could do three turns. Do that times three. I could do four turns. How am I going to know how many turns it takes to get up to 1,318.8? Well, you could just keep adding 188.4 a bunch of times until you got to that. Okay, another way to do that is to see is you can actually divide it out. You can do 1318.8. You can divide, see how many times it takes by 188.4. Okay, so let's type that in. 1318.8 divided by 188.4. Okay, I end up with seven. So it took seven um, spins or turns of her bike wheel to go that far. Now, if you wanted to check that out, you could do 188.4. You could do that seven times because that's just one turn. Okay, so my final answer is seven turns.